Today we will paint a basic seascape and some dune grasses. We will start painting from the back and gradually work our way forward. I start off by masking the horizon to ensure it remains perfectly horizontal. Then starting at the bottom I paint using white and a touch of cadmium yellow. As I move upwards I gradually add more and more cerulean blue to the mix. To paint the clouds I use the initial sky color and a soft filbert brush. I paint the tops of the clouds and then fade them out towards the bottom of the cloud. To complete the clouds, I add their bottoms using the darkest sky color, fading it upwards into the cloud. To keep the horizon interesting, I add a few small islands in the distance, also using the darkest sky color. If you want them to look even further away, you can use a lighter sky color. Using a fine liner, I then add a bit of detail to them using the lightest sky color. For the sea, I have mixed blues in a range of tonal values by taking the sky color and adding varying amounts of French ultramarine, viridian green and titanium white to it. For the beach, I have added yellow ochre to white. I then dry the sky using a hair dryer and mask off the sky using masking tape to ensure the horizon remains horizontal. The sea is blocked in in exactly the same way as the sky, except this time don't bother to get perfectly smooth shadings. The uneven blendings help to create the illusion of movement on the water. We can then do the same for the beach. I will now add waves to the water. I want them to run all the way across the canvas, so I place a piece of masking tape along the length, which I can use as a guide to keep my waves straight and parallel to each other. I paint the waves using a soft fulbert brush. You can also use a rigger brush. A wave doesn't break all at once. It tends to run along the beach, gradually breaking from left to right or right to left and sometimes at multiple places. So to create this uneven breaking effect, I vary the pressure on the brush as I paint the wave. And at places I will even press so light that the brush lifts off the canvas. To get the perspective in the waves correct, I paint the distant waves closer together and the nearer waves further apart. As you move closer to the beach, also add a little more yellow ochre and viridian to the wave color. We now want to make it look like the waves are breaking. And as the wave breaks, it casts a shadow on itself, as well as generating a bunch of foam on its leading edge. So we'll need to paint that. I add the shadows using the darker sea color and the edge of a painting knife. You could also use a fine liner if that is easier for you. To add the leading foam edge, I use a rigger brush and white to add a few breakers here and there. To add more detail to the foreground, I add some white foam on the water and reflect the breakers in the water. These reflections give the water a nice 3D effect. We can now move on to the sand dunes. I use raw umber. French ultramarine and white to mix up a neutral grey. We'll use this to plot out the basic dune shapes as well as lay in the shadow colors for the dunes. As I paint, I'm interested in painting the lay of the land. Imagine you place a ball on the sand. The direction and path it would roll is the direction and path you would need to paint in order to show the lay of the land correctly. With the lay of the land correctly established, we can now add yellow ochre and more white to the grey to get a highlight colour. Using this, we can now establish the shadings caused by the sun on the undulating sand. Lighten as the sand curves more towards the sun and darken as it curves away. As you work, that sand will tend to become smoother. This is okay, but try not to blend the colours into each other too much Rather let them lie on top of and next to each other, otherwise the sand will appear too smooth. You will see that I add the impression of footprints in the path as well. This helps to add interest in the final painting. Now we can start adding the dune grasses. We will build these up in layers using multiple colors. For the darkest shadow color, I add French ultramarine and burnt sienna together. I use this to create a mass at the base of each patch of grass. To stop this mass from looking like it's sitting on top of the sand, 
I use a crisscross motion to blend the base of the grass into the sand. Now that we know where the grasses will be, we can finalize the highlights on the sand using the lightest sky color. We can then switch to a rigger brush to grow our grasses. Flick a multitude of grasses outwards from the mass. Add these flicks mostly upwards but at very random angles in order to get the grasses to look more natural. And you can also add a few coming downwards as well. I also like to vary the length of each grass so the silhouette of the patch remains random. Once you're happy with the silhouette, dry the grass using the hairdryer. Now mix up several different grass colors. I have mixed up variations of burnt sienna, yellow ochre, sap green and white to give me seven different grass colors. You will now add these to the grass patches using the same flicking motion, drying the paint between each layer. By the time you are complete, you will have lovely dense but alive dune grasses. Lastly, use the darkest dune color to flick in some shadows cast by the grasses on the sand. To complete the painting, I add a few birds in the sky for interest. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. If you have, please like and subscribe. Also, visit our website to follow the real-time, step-by-step, paint-along version of this class. I'll see you next time.